Hi, welcome to Ms. Richardson's U.S. History 5-Minute Lectures. The information here will be U.S. Notes 4.11, President Eisenhower's Cold War, Part 1. We're going to actually have two of these. It includes information that aligns with the third section on your Unit 4 study guide. Remember, you have control over the lecture, so pause whenever you need, use your study guide to help you figure out what to write down, and write down any questions you have and bring those to class. And rewatch if you need to. Let's go ahead and get started. We've already talked about President Truman and his policies in the Cold War, but seeing how the Cold War lasted more than 40 years, there are several other presidents we need to consider and who are involved. Now we're going to examine President Eisenhower and his actions and policies during the Cold War years. So in 1952, the Republican nominee for president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, won the presidency. Richard Nixon served as his vice president, and that role would lead him to like help lead him into the presidency much later on. So he's not going to be the next president, but he's going to keep popping up up until he is president. In the Soviet Union, there were also leadership changes. Stalin died in 1953, as I mentioned in the earlier notes, and Nikita Khrushchev became the Soviet premier. So actions and policies began to change with new leadership in both countries. Ideas and policies did not change immediately. The U.S. was still going to practice containment, but Eisenhower wanted to add to this idea. That can actually be seen in the Eisenhower Doctrine. The Eisenhower Doctrine was added to the American policies in 1957 to continue to thwart the spread of communism. It was specific to the Middle East. Under the Eisenhower Doctrine, Middle Eastern countries could request military or financial aid to resist armed aggression from another country. Specifically, we were talking about the Soviet Union. So the U.S. would send money or military to help them keep another country out. It was a specific response to keep the Soviets from spreading their influence further into the Middle East. So we're trying to con keep control of the Middle East and contain communism out of it. In addition to the Eisenhower Doctrine and this continued containment, Eisenhower developed some other new ideas and programs. One new idea that Eisenhower developed was known as massive retaliation, also called total retaliation. So they're the same thing. This policy, this idea, was based on the thought that small wars like Korea were expensive and unpopular. The American public did not want another Korean War, where we fought for three years to end up essentially in the same place. So the U.S. instead used massive retaliation as the basis for their foreign policy. This is actually the threat of using nuclear weapons to combat the spread of communism. So if something happens, we will retaliate with everything we have, which includes nuclear weapons. Using nuclear war as a threat, the U.S. was able to cut military costs while increasing the U.S. stockpile of nuclear weapons. So we don't have to spend as much on other things, but we have more weapons now. That meant if we were forced into a war, America would have more nuclear bombs than any other country, and that meant that they would win. So that was kind of a benefit of massive retaliation. This led it tied into another one of Eisenhower's ideas known as brinkmanship. The idea and the term brinkmanship were actually coined and started by Secretary of State John Foster Doles, who was, like I said, President Eisenhower's Secretary of State. He used this to support the policy and the idea of massive retaliation. It was the idea that the U.S. would go to the brink or the edge of war in order to force the other side to back down. So we are willing to go to the edge. Maybe not go to war, but we'll go to the edge, we'll threaten, we're right there and ready for it. Eisenhower used this idea several times throughout his presidency to deal with different foreign issues that came up. Other issues and incidents came up throughout Eisenhower's presidency, and we're going to look at those in the next set of notes because this is the end of notes 4.11. Hopefully you learned something, and if you have questions, make sure you bring those to class.